Hey everybody, it's day 23. We're well into week four of our um, every, oh, listen to that. We are doing bird voices today, language of the birds, as John Young calls it, and uh, Tom Brown. Um, as a matter of fact, we're going to go through what John Young uh, describes as the five voices of the birds, so that when you hear a bird song or call, uh, the plan today after we teach you about the different voice of the birds is to um, um, listen to songs and calls and what they mean and how they can help you find animals out in the forest and also keep you safe um, from other people or predators that you might want to be aware of that are out there because the birds um, often uh, as uh, Tom Brown describes sends out, send out like concentric rings of language out into the forest to tell you what's going on um, <laughs> but before we do that, we want to um, review a little bit of what we did yesterday and actually pour in some plaster of Paris into these tracks right here. And there's a new critter that came through. Yes! You might remember yesterday there were raccoon tracks, possum, possum tracks, um, and on our way back, by the way, we missed a couple little... Um, little rodent little tracks. Rodents, uh, down by the creek there were muskrat tracks. We're just going to demonstrate how to pour in plaster of Paris so that you can preserve real tracks in the ground. And then, But we're also going to take a look at this new one that came through right here. And knocked over our stick. Yeah, knocked over a stick. So it'll be kind of fun to track uh, that. And then tomorrow we're going to head out to our favorite place along the river. It's uh, open to go to and we were there two days ago and it has amazing tracks going on right now and we're going to live track uh, for a half an hour uh, well I did one that I'd love to follow but I'm sure there's other really cool ones that have come since maybe we'll follow that one until we see another fresh one go across a different direction and live trail that all right um, let's begin with this plaster casting. Um, while Kim is setting up for that down here, I'll just uh, review the, you know, always have a birding book with you, which almost any of them are good nowadays. And um, then um, here's the birding, uh, Sibley Birding, Bird Tracks and Sign by Mark Elbrock. That was his first book, amazing a series of wildlife tracking books, um, mammals, insects, <laughs> all sorts of cool tracking books. Of course, I mentioned yesterday Jim Halfpenny's uh, Scats and Tracks of North America, and for our area, uh, David Moskowitz's Wildlife of the Pacific Northwest. These are uh, you're only barely into it. Get Jim Halfpenny's because it's really simple to use if you really are in our area and really want to go and learn a lot about wildlife and uh, observing their sign. Get that book by David Moskowitz. It's a great book. Yeah. It's really got everything in it. When you find something out in the field and you're like, oh, I wonder what that is. You just look in Moskowitz and there it is. Can I sit where you are? Yeah. Um, and then good. you can turn the cameras, maybe. Should I um, show this new one first or uh, talk um, about what you're going to do well, first? Well, I'm going to talk about what I'm going to do and then we can show the new one. We okay. make sure that the cameras... Yeah, go ahead. Whatever. Okay. I think you're good. So, go to the store and buy yourself some plaster of Paris. And I recommend that you get the big one only because once you start, this is so much fun you're going to want more. It's really awesome. And one other thing, um, I've actually taken my chickens out into the mud and gone, whoosh, stuck them in the mud and then done plaster casts of their footprints. So you can do that with your pets too, as long as you don't mind getting a little muddy, muddy paw. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, so here's how you do it. And those of you that are here listening, listening, this is bird song going on. That's one of the five voices of the birds. So as you're hearing uh, us talk, listen to the hey. song going on. Oh, the Chris across the street. Hey, what? I'm going to wave to her across the street. House. <laughs> 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 anyway, so um, there's a couple different ways that you can carry plaster in the field. Now, I definitely carry it when I go on vacation or when we go hiking. It's worth it to me to have that extra weight because you never know what you're going to find. In fact, that's how I've gotten some amazing tracks in the past. Accidentally found grizzly bear tracks um, when we were on vacation. It was a call of nature stop, and I won't tell you the story, but it was very exciting. And got to track the grizzly all around the field there. Um, beaver, grateful heron, all sorts of things. You never know what you're going to see. So anyway, here's the way that I have the kids at camp do it because I want to divvy up all the plaster they got to get used to carrying their own stuff. And this is what I recommend you do. Just take a little Ziploc bag, fill it up with plaster, 
Roll it up and stick it in a cup. And this is everything that you need because in nature you'll find a stick that you use for stirring. And if you have water in your water bottle or you're near a creek or a river or something like that, you can use that kind of water. Um, I take it to the next level a little bit when I'm doing it. I like to use a Tupperware container and that is because I can put the lid back on and then when this dries, the plaster dries in it, you can just kind of squeeze it and it cracks out and you can use this over and over again. I always stick it in a big zippy bag because you're going to need some sort of a garbage bag because you never want to leave litter in the field and if you got all this gooey plaster you want to make sure you got something to put it in so anyway let's just do this oh can i show them the tracks and then we'll do oh it? yeah you yeah, yeah. you can show them the tracks and then uh, do you want to yeah because you don't want to mix it until we know which one we're going to do first because you right, only I'll have a few it. minutes i'll okay, just prep, prep it. it yeah yeah it hardens up really fast so you definitely don't want to mix it until you've identified the track that you want to plaster cast um, and you are ready to go Mm -hmm. And we can answer some more questions about that. I okay, guess, so it. take a look at this. Those of you that saw the video yesterday want to go back and look at it. You'll remember this location. And now, um, can you point it out? Yeah, sure. There's so that. this is the first easy track to see mm -hmm. right here. And then the next one is going deep in the mud. And then you'll notice here's our popsicle stick that was by the raccoon track that got knocked over. Mm -hmm. And if you follow it through, I don't know if y'all can see this, but... Here's another super deep track right there. And then oh. keeps on going. Yeah. Look over so you can see. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> I'll point again. And it keeps on again. going down that trail over that way. All right, well, anyway, so let's demonstrate. Um, I'm going to point out some characteristics of this track. Okay. And then, um, can you hold that up? Back. Can you hold that right there? Oh, and uh, notice this new track right here. And it has four toes. Has cl four claws showing. And it has a heel pad. And if Kimmer will um, point out these things with finger, sure. I'm holding the cameras. Okay, so here's your four toes yep. two and forward, two back. And, and they are perfectly heart, heel symmetrical, heel right? Yes. Which there's... means if you were to draw a line right here and fold it in half, both sides would be the same. It's mm -hmm. bilaterally symmetrical. Yep. And now it's, it is smushed around in the mud a little bit, so it's hard to see the exact symmetry. But, um, okay, and then the heel pad, it's hard to see probably with the camera, but there's two kind of bumps in the back. Blink. Point. And kind of one in the front. It creates kind of a triangle sort of look. And it is and uh, two, claws. no, without claws, just measuring with the toes. That is about two and a quarter inches length by about an inch and three quarters. Wait, let's oh, great. Got yeah, a tape it. measure here. So those of you that might be looking this up on the internet or in your field guide at home, yep, two and a quarter mm -hmm. length by almost two inch width mm -hmm. not quite so it's a little longer than his wide plus claws makes it even look even longer so um yeah four toes four claws um perfectly symmetrical that's a wild dog or canine of some sort and the size if you look it up there's only one wild canine that size well there are two if you go, uh, red fox can almost be that size, but in this case, uh, the heel pad indicates that it's coyote. All right, let's uh, pour some plaster into one of these. Yeah, tracks. I mean, now it's not Lily because she doesn't get to come back here. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's a little bit small for her, anyways. Okay. So, do you want you can put yeah. it back up okay. again? Sure. Okay, so I've got my plaster in my cup and. Uh, Add my water to it. Which one should we do? Uh, whichever. What do you think we need more of for our classes? Well, that was kind of a nice possum. Oh, that. yeah. That's I mean, you true. got the really good thumb Let's try and the that possum. display. Although I could get the yo. Let's get the possum and the yo all together in one. Let's see if I have enough yep. plaster for it. Yeah. Okay. There's another possum over here that you can see the toes and the little of uh, the rear foot, little toes all together, and then um, cupping around the front track. That's a big splay sort of a track. Um, but this one is, even though it's not as deep, it's probably going to be a better track as far as, um, can you point it out? What, um, which, what am I pointing I just out? Set that down the mall. Possum. That one? Yeah, rear track right there with the little toes. And the thumb. And it kind of cups around the front track. Yeah, there, yeah. So it's coming toward, coming toward the camera, <laughs> as opposed to the coyote is going away from the camera, up. All right. So what do you got going on here? Okay, so I've just added some water to my plaster. 
and you want to mix it up really really well but you don't want to mix it up super fast because the faster you go the more bubbly and frothy it gets and we don't want it to be bubbly and frothy or else it's going to end up being really weird. Now you can't help having some bubbles in it and I'm just using a spoon right now because it's I had one and it's really easy to get down to the bottom corners and that's one of the pe things that people sometimes don't do correctly is um, they'll leave a lot of the dried plaster in the bottoms of the cup, bottom corners of the cup. So you really wanna make sure to try to scoop into those corners and I just smash it up against the wall. And what you're looking for is you're looking for sort of a thin toothpaste to a really thick milkshake. So it'd be kind of, if you picture sucking up a milkshake through a straw, if you really have to suck hard to get it, that's kind of the consistency that you want. Now, of course, if you're out in the desert trying to do plastering, you're gonna want something that's a little bit thinner because it'll dry super fast. In fact, one time we were in Eastern Washington um, plastering wolf tracks and my plaster was drying so fast each little blob that I dropped on the ground in the track would dry and it left it looking really layered. It was really interesting. All right, so here we go. Okay, I don't know if you can see this consistency here. It's already starting to thicken up, so I better get on the stick. Now you don't want to drop it from a super high height. You want to get it right down over what you're trying to plaster and pour it right in the center. This is really thick. I don't think I'm going to be able to get the yo. Well, maybe. All right, I guess I'll just do it. Yep, so kind of with your whatever stick you're using, the field Kim's just using a spoon, of course, but just kind of gently wiggle it so that it gets yeah. all in there. And yeah. if you have more, if you really want to preserve the track, use even more so it's stronger and bigger and thicker. Yeah, and you know, I can add more, oh, I just splashed myself in the face. I can add more later to this little center portion to try to help it connect. That's going to be a weak point since this track is really big. Yeah. I am just barely touching this, by the way. Mm -hmm. All right. That's pretty much it. Now, you, okay. depending on the weather, how wet it is, how dry it is, how hot and cold it is, and you can do this in snow too if you get the mix just right, but you have to let it sit for quite a long time. In our case, uh, probably half an hour would be going to be fine in this kind of 60 degree weather, although it is a wet substrate. So we'll so leave it in there for an hour. Thing about it? Mm -hmm. So one of the things that really stresses kids out at camp is they're worried about their clothes and if they get plaster on their fingers or on their clothes. And I can guarantee you that this is not a big deal. This will wash off just fine. So never worry about the plaster like All right. that. All right. So um, it is t now time for us to um, do an introduction to the language of the birds because we're going to need this. I'm going to follow this coyote. Um, just noticed it here, you know, 20 minutes ago or 15 minutes ago, but we're going to follow this coyote, but we need to pay attention to, it was probably this morning, so we're not going to catch up to it, obviously, in the next few minutes, but um, you need, I want to train you on what you need to remember as you're following animals, as you're staying aware. The name, number one thing is awareness, and so you want to keep your 360 degree listening skills on. You want to have your wide angle vision that we discussed yesterday. That's um, being able to use your peripheral vision. Um, and you want to uh, walk in a certain way where you're, John, uh, Tom Brown calls it the fox walk and other kinds of walks that will help you move through nature. It, there's all sorts of different, depending on the train we're going through, you'll have different kinds of walks. Sometimes crawls, sometimes belly crawls. Uh, but anyways, um, language of the birds really helps because it'll help you. Oh, there's a rabbit over there. Right down about halfway, if you can see him. Um, I'm going to see if I can point. He's like, yeah. look right in there somewhere. I can't quite For which tell. camera are you using? On here? mine. Yours oh. just doesn't quite see it. Okay. There you go. On yours, it's like, uh, I don't know. I can't quite, down in oh, here somewhere. It just moves so people probably tell. Okay, okay well, well, we'll watch it while talking about language of the birds. Um, so we're listening to a lot of bird song right now, meaning that there's not a lot of predators going on, there's no hawks flying over. Uh, the birds sing primarily to mark their territories, sometimes to attract mates this time of year in the spring, uh, if they don't have one yet, but they're already in this area really kind of settled out on their ter early territories uh, before the 
migrants start coming up in. So we have robins singing their song right there. Kind of chim cheerily, cheerily. And then just above us, when it if it sings again, what did we have? Was the song sparrow? Yeah, swan, song sparrow is going, which will starts with three introductory notes. Two or three. This one is doing mm, two. Two. And. Well, they yep. have a number of different varieties, but yep. normally it's something like a tweet tweet. We'll probably get it. Mm, probably get it alarming too. Anyway, so the, that's the song marking the territory. Usually. Oh. oh. That's the song sparrow. See if we can get up close. That was if people were listening could hear that song. Yeah. Oh right, that's true. He probably came in here to sing. Now that's where he was singing from. Oh, there it is. That was only one introductory note that I barely heard, but let's see if we can hear it again. Off in the distance. I should zoom in if I could, but that's what he was listen for earlier. That was a very abbreviated song. I would have been like, who is that if I hadn't been seeing it? All right, well, anyways, that's the song. The alarms are when, oh, yep, rabbit's still over there, so I'm going to still point that direction. And we can still listen to the song Sparrow singing. Um, there he goes. Oh, little cutie. Oh, off he goes. All right, so the songs, the uh, alarm is another one of the, what uh, John Young calls five voices of the birds. And... The alarm is when something's wrong. And um, another time when we do just this, I'll go into a little more detail, but just know that if you hear alarm, that usually means something's up, something's coming your way, or you're causing alarm, and so you need to back off. And then there's babies begging is a third one. A fourth one would be intraspecies aggression, where they're fighting over territory. One male goes into another male's territory, and they start yelling at each other. And... Um, also, there are companion calls, and so there's kind of a progression from companion calls into alarm calls. Sometimes the companion just kind of does sort of a, a check-in. Um, like a spotted toey? Would go, and then waiting for the other one to go. We might, we'll see what, when, if we go that spot. All right, song sparrow. Um, and... Then it might, or the robin might go, <laughs> to kind of give a little like, oh, there's a person or a raccoon or a like bear a or something whinny. coming by, like a horse whinny. But then if it starts going, beer. Don't want to scare them. Yeah, I don't want to scare up anything. Uh, that means they're a little bit more danger, a cat or um, a person or a bear is getting a little too close, but more like something that would hunt them. And they start moving into the water. Could be an owl. Mm -hmm. Like if you hear a bunch of robins out in the woods oh, yeah. going, going off, beer. Beer. just sitting there making that sound over beer. and over, then look around beer. for an owl sitting nearby. <laughs> yep. That's how we find them all the time. Mm -hmm. All right, and then we listen to find people and bears a lot when you hear the horse when you kind of. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, well, let's follow this coyote. Um, okay. What time is it? It is 6.19. Okay, great. We have 10 yes. minutes to follow this coyote and disturb some birds. Okay. Do you want to take your camera off there um, to get through? Yeah, why don't you pull it? Yeah, why don't I do that? Okay, this one's going to get a little wobbly, mm -hmm. maybe. We'll mm -hmm. see. And I'm going to keep mine on. Okay. Um, so here we go. We're going to follow this coyote. Now, when you're following tracking, you can't get stuck on the tracks that are just in front of you. You have to look out ahead and see if um, you can... Oh, you know what? I should turn I around. I should switch this around. Yeah, I'm going to switch this around. Oh, yeah, okay, everybody, hold on. We're going to take this out of here and um, pop it around the direction. I see what you're seeing. It's going to be so much, so so much, much better. better. Hi, everybody. Okay, stuff on the plaster. No, I'll try not to. Okay. Okay, here we go. Okay, following that track. Uh, yeah, there we go. And then it goes underneath the fence right mm -hmm. there. And then you have to look out, and obviously you got to think. Oh, well, obviously they're not gonna go anywhere le right or left right here. They're probably hunting all these possums and raccoons and things like that. Okay. And so, 
it's just gonna follow a trail. You don't want to get bogged down. You don't necessarily see a track. Um, some of this stuff is harder than others, so they're not gonna go in too deep. There's one there, but it's hard to see. Now here's a crossroads, one going that way, and the little critters can go left, but a coyote is not going to. Coyote is gonna if, probably just go straight. Now he could hunt and try to turn that direction, but you wouldn't want to bother looking there. You want to look first straight. So out ahead here. Oh yeah, here's one of those little rodent tracks right there. Oh, I know that one is cute. Oh, yeah. Here's my. Got it. Good. Yep. And uh, so gonna go up and over. He pops over to here. <laughs> oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, the problem with trailing is that here. Let me hold both of them. Okay. Problem with trailing is that you can only only the you have to walk right on top of the track. So now he goes out in here. He's got choices either to the right where we walked yesterday. I see our trail. Coyote isn't necessarily going to go that way. As a matter of fact, I see a little bit of a push this direction. Yep. And it's really hard to trail um, in the sun. <laughs> It's unless you see real. Oh yeah, where is it? Oh yeah, right. Here we go. Singing spot. There he is. Let's see if we can get him to sing after I pimp such a. Okay, there we go. You hear that? Sweet, sweet. Beautiful. All right. So, do you want to talk about how you can identify a song for? Do what? Oh no. Uh uh. Not right now. We're following this coyote. Okay. Getting onto this main trail, going this way. And I know of a, now I'm not positive it went this way, but I did see some indication of push down. And I know there's a trail uh, right here, the same one that the raccoon and everything were calling. Oh so I wanted goodness, to see whether, I know, I wanted to see whether the coyote oh came up here. Wow. Matter of fact, oh, when you pushed on that, oh, really sorry, right there. that right there. Yep. Let's see if it gets back on here. Oh, rotate, oh, that's okay. Yeah, looks like right there. Let's see if we can get some real clear, definitive. Mm -hmm. Right here, look at this. Although, oh, wait, this, <laughs> this coyote is going. Now. Oh, what? That's no fun. Mm -hmm. um, there we go. Yeah, this is a coyote track right here, but it's going the other direction. Uh, let's see if we've got one coming this way. Not that I see right here. Uh, well, uh, well, let's look right here. This is clear. That's some kind of raccoon. Uh, well, tomorrow's the trailing day. But I thought we'd maybe let's get lucky and see if it would come this direction, but it That's okay, we wanna go this way. Let's anyway. continue. Yeah. I wanna go yeah. in here. Oh, what do you got? Okay. Oh dear. Maybe? Uh two front toes. Two front toes. Mm -hmm. Maybe? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, two front toes of, well, yeah, we'll have to spend some more time on that and on the way back. Just to double check, but, oh, the little curves go this way. Bigger guys will go this way. I want to get into this forest right here because I know that some of the birds are setting up. And let's see if we can get some alarms going. And Not only do this for educational you know, purposes, but if we head in here, up some there's alarms there's a nice trail burn right in there and it's a little tight there I want to stay to the right and I'm gonna go off and around the trail over this way just so it's easier with the camera than crawling I'm not sure I can crawl through here at the same time these Sitka spruce and cedar I know there's some birds setting up. What'd you see? I saw the, yeah, I saw the um, shadow and went the other direction. Right in here, we're suspecting a, some crows are setting up in there because we saw them bringing, yeah. Or maybe since we saw them come out of here, that's where they are. So I'm bringing in a bunch of sticks and they uh, perch on this snag and look around and then head in here. But that snag also gets a lot of hawks and eagles, so they're going to have to be really careful. Yeah. All right. 
All right, let's go around here. See if we can get some alarms going. Maybe we're not being disturbing enough. Head toward a singer. That song sparrow didn't even alarm us. Taught us its song, but not its alarm call. Down around here is a new, oh, look at this trail, huge trail coming out of here. The thing that makes this challenging is that um, we're out here making a lot of noise and so normally if you want to really have a lot of birds singing going back to their natural behaviors and activities you want to get into a spot and then be there for 20 minutes or, or longer mm -hmm. um, just be totally quiet and then everything will start to go back to its normal patterns and routines and then you'll get your yep. abundance I was trying to push some alarms though it's just yeah. that we have to I was hoping that it sounds better. We got to get toward a robin that's singing, and then maybe we can get it to alarm. And exactly what Kim was talking about is kind of a nice introduction to um, our switch in about a week to um, wolf, our wolf journey, Earth Conservation Course. We're going to start broadcasting one field exercise a day and putting that for free up on the website. Well, we're going to ask for donations for part one to one of our sister schools. And then as we get into later chapters, now that school has been canceled for the rest of the year. Oh. Nice song sparrow. Yeah. So I'm thinking this is where the marsh run was seen yep. from. As it's you can see, nice perfect cattails. run habitat, marsh run habitat. Yep. It's all the cattails. See if we can get it. Um, anyway, so the wolf journey, we're going to start putting that up um, and unveiling one field exercise each day from my old book, Wolf Journey, from 20 years ago. There goes the crow that had to, we flushed out and now mm -hmm. is sitting over there waiting for us to get out of here. Did didn't make an, and didn't of course they didn't, they don't make any oh, sound by the... There's a jay. Yeah, there's a scrubber. Scrub jay. Um, can you hold this one and I can mm -hmm. like pull. There, Oops, there you go. I don't think you can see it yeah, with my can. phone. Oh, you can't? Can't you like yeah. zoom in there? Mm. No, it kind of messes yeah. it up. All right. But, oh, yeah, well, it locked up. Oh, it locked up your phone? Yep. Oh, okay, well, that's all right. Uh, I'll just do the conclusion on my phone. I can see it. It's still live. Oh, okay, great. It's just right. not showing anything. Oh my gosh, look at these trails going down in here. So this was dug out about three years ago. And oh, matter of fact, look at that. Raccoon finger right here. Yes, fingers there. Yeah, raccoon fingers. They love going through these um, really shallow marshy areas. Well, I don't know if people can see anything from right and now. I'm, uh, so you have your waterproof? Yeah. I wonder if we can oh. keep going along the edge here. This is the main crossing point right here. I'm gonna go over there where I was singing, okay, see if we can get along. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It sounds like it's still there. I love how these trails are really set up through here since they built this. Let's see if we can get an alarm going. I hear. I might hear an alarm. But... Yeah. A lot of robins singing off in the distance, but not one right here. We might not be in their main territory. Back at our house. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. We're going to um, continue tomorrow out on our favorite river tracking site. Join us for uh, oh. live tracking. And it's a really great sandbar, um, meaning that we can see tracks going for a long, nice long distance. Mm -hmm. And so it'll be a lot of fun out there. It's our favorite thing to do, combining birding, bird language, and... Um, <laughs> It's, oh, I know it's so hard. Tomorrow, you know what? And you know what we're doing tomorrow? We're just following one set, and we're gonna try not to get distracted by all the other oh, sets. Oh, it's a out kinglet! There. Oh, dang! Let's get up there. Okay, we're gonna try to find the kinglet, and then oh, we're gonna yeah, sign off. Oh, the... just splitting around. Yeah. We're gonna go up there anyway.
course, everything's backlit going this direction because of the sun right there. Uh, I was going to say trailing through brush. It's hard to go into the sun, but on uh, sandbars and where tracks are clear, it's best to go into the sun. It's so much easier to see because of the shadowing effect on the tracks. All right, we're going to sign off. Say goodbye to everybody. Bye, to everybody. Yeah. Be well. Get outside. We'll pull the plasters, plaster and show you guys mm -hmm. how it turned out. Yeah. And, um,